and it's on CV preparation. And for those of you who dialed in earlier, our apologies. We just can't help something on the technical side. Um, but we've decided to go back to the old and trustworthy Microsoft Teams. So here we are. Um, as I said, we're going to do CV preparation. We have two senior consultants to talk to you today. We've got Daniela, who is on the commercial side and looks after sales. And then we have Noel, who is head of contracting for IT. And both of those ladies will introduce themselves to you now in a moment. A little bit about FRS recruitment. So uh, we're in business since 1980. We're a cooperative and we're the only recruitment cooperative in Ireland. We have 10 branches around the country and over 60 consultants ready to assist you in any of your recruitment needs across multiple divisions. That includes IT, healthcare, commercial, tech eng, construction and more. Um, we um, are very professional, highly experienced and we're very customer focused. And those customers are both our clients and our candidates. And this webinar today is focused in on our candidates. Just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, we will have time for questions at the end. So please put your questions into the chat box if you have any. And also please do follow FRS Recruitment on LinkedIn, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook. You can get plenty of information about the rest of the webinar series and more. OK, so let's get started and it's over to you first, Daniela. Thank you, Maria. Um, I hope you're all keeping safe and well. Um, apologies about the initial um, outcomings this morning, but um, we're up and running. Thank God. Um, my name's Daniela and I'm a senior recruitment consultant with FRS Recruitment. Um, I've been in the industry for about 15 years and I've done both internal and external recruitment. I joined FRS Recruitment about six years ago and I specialise in the recruitment of sales professionals. I recruit from van sales to sales executives, area sales managers and sales directors and I recruit within the regions of Connacht and Dublin. Some of the companies that I have done recruit for in the past would be within the industry of construction. You have the likes of the Murdoch Group, Brooks, Grafton, Merchant and McMahons. Also recruitment within the financial services. I have worked with Bank of Ireland, Car Market and FBD. Within FNCG, I have created within Nestle, LaRousse Foods, Musgraves, and other companies such as Bunsen McLaughlin, McLaughlin's RS, Nesbitt's, Rexel, and Elise, just to mention a few. I always feel that recruitment is like a jigsaw piece with two pieces. You have the client and you have the candidate. Both pieces have to fit very well. Otherwise, it doesn't work and it certainly won't last. I pride myself on offering um, a very high quality recruitment service to my clients. I know their industry, their products, their clients and their market. And that way I'm best uh, positioned to find the correct profile that fits their company. Um, CVs, um, the recruiter only spends about seven to 15 seconds reading a CV. So it's imperative that your CV makes that very, very first um, impression. Um, thanks very much. Great, wonderful. Thanks, Daniela. And now, everyone, I would like to introduce you to Noelle, who's the head of contracting on our IT team. Noelle, over to you. Thanks a million, Maria. Hi, everybody. As Maria said, I'm in charge of the contracting side of things in FRS. I've been here for about five years. Previously, I worked in a number of other recruitment organizations before going into industry and working with software development organizations and enterprise CRM skills. So uh, on the contracting side of things, we deal prim primarily with day rate contractors, people who are not technically employed, but who come in as limited companies and provide their services to us. Do that in every sector our clients are looking for. So that would include software development, of course, Java and C Sharp, but also things such as Ruby and Rails, Python, some of the more out there and interesting uh, uh, languages to get one's teeth into. Currently looking avidly for MuleSoft developers. If you are one or you know one, please send them my way. We have remote working contracts. Had to get the plug in there while I was on. In addition mm -hmm. to that, of course, we work with big data. Sorry, MuleSoft are impossible to find. Uh, we work with big data, so Hadoop, Hive, Impala, Hue, all of that kind of stuff. We work with infrastructure support, hyper-converged virtual, virtualization, everything from uh, HM, HPE uh, as a client to SimpliVity, down to sectors, sorry, a little flustered there, working with multinationals across the world, such as HP Enterprises, such as BD Medical, who are online to be working with an organization in the US with a, a vaccine for the, the current situation, so fingers crossed there. Companies such as JLR, 
And again, small Irish startups, indigenous organizations that are growing as well, like Meeting Bookers, Glass Lewis, ABM Data, everything and anything out there. So that's me. Great. OK, wonderful. Thanks a million. OK, so um, let's get started. We have a few questions to kind of go through and ask our consultants in relation to how to create your best CV. So, so basically, I, I suppose the first thing is in relation to first impressions. So, um, Daniela, are first impressions really important when it comes to your CV? Oh, absolutely. Um, it goes out saying your CV is the first point of contact between the, your potential employer and the recruiter. And as I said, they only spend about seven to 10 seconds actually looking at the CV. So it's imperative that it's perfect. So uh, proofread it and or have somebody else proofread it as well. Be careful with grammar, prepare, be careful with spelling. Even the smallest spelling mistake will end, will end up your CV being in the no pile. Um, keep your sentences short. Watch your tone, be consistent with your uh, text font choice and the size, make sure that all flows. And um, the one common mistake I see a lot on CVs is the word I. Eliminate the word I completely out of your CV. OK, fantastic. Um, Noel, again, an overall impressions. What do you think about putting a photograph on your CV? Well, you know, Everybody will have a very subjective reason uh, or, or, or choice on that. But I would always err on the side of caution and not put one down unless it is specifically requested. I work, as I say, in IT contracting. Really, nobody gets hired because of their looks in that in that sector. You're, you're more worried about their skill set. Are they going to be able to deliver the project or tasks they're being given? So the photograph in that case is really just a distraction. You know, unless you're going for a modeling job, perhaps leave it out unless specifically asked for it. Agreed. OK, OK, fantastic. So um, then in relation to the overall formatting of a CV, Daniela, we see some that are um, kind of all done in, yeah. in order. And then we see others that have symbols and templates and things like that. So what's your opinion in relation to the overly formatted uh, CV? Personally, I find them distracting. Um, I think when you're doing a CV, you should keep your CV simple uh, and basic and straight to the point. Um, mm -hmm. All the words, all the jazz words, all the buzzwords, all the color and graphics, they are distracting to the eye. They take away from the message that you're trying to get across uh, and the reader will become uninterested in the content. Um, so yeah, I would recommend that CVs are kept simple and basic. Okay. Um, I think as well, it, you may have mentioned previously as well, I think that it takes the, per the personality out of the CV. Yeah, no, absolutely. Your, your personality doesn't come across as well um, when you have all these graphics and displays of boxes and colours. Um, a, a more basic, simple CV depicts you as a person a lot better. Okay. Um, I can add to in that. The, Oh, yes, please something do. Something to be aware of as well. An awful lot of organizations like ourselves, and of course, a lot of larger hiring companies are using specific software solutions to enable them to automate the process of assessing CVs. Mm. And most of those systems hate tables mm. and symbols and mm. colors and graphics. If you have it done plainly in Word or in indeed possibly a PDF, that's all you need to be doing. Yeah, perfect. That's really important, actually. Yes, because then the, the system can't do anything with the CV. So your CV goes nowhere. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Are, sometimes they come in with all of it's completely deformatted. So you actually yes. can't read what you're looking for. And that's not going to help either. That's yeah. not going to help either. OK, wonderful stuff. So then in relation to um, on the IT side, um, in IT, there's a lot of uh, buzzwords, if you like. So they're probably important in relation to IT roles, Noel. Probably not so much on commercial, but I'd like to hear both views in relation to using acronyms and buzzwords on a CV. But I'll start with you, Noel, please. Well, again, on the IT contracting side, we tend to be a little bit, uh, uh, use it as a shorthand, if you like, versus a lot of the other uh, sectors that would be dealing with it. For most organizations, having jargon that's used only within your own company or industry isn't helpful. But again, if you're talking about IT people, the skill sets don't matter if you're using them within retail or within public sector or within manufacturing. You're still a C-sharp.net developer. 
So mm. as you can see from that particular sentence, obviously we use a fair amount of, of jargon out there. Yes. So for me, I like to see that, but I like it to be laid out in a kind of a technical summary. Here are the languages I use, here are the operating systems or the environments in which I operate, here are the solutions I support. And if that's laid out in the top of the CV, it just makes it so much easier to see in, as Danielle says, your seven to 10 seconds glancing at it, is this person relevant or not? You don't want it to be discounted at that stage because yes. you barely get a second look. Okay. Would it be the opposite then for you, Daniela? Well, on commercial CVs, in particular within the sales environment, I'm looking for a personality to shine through. Uh, I want to see the personality in the paper. Um, and it's always good to use as many positive words as you possibly can to describe yourself, but don't get too cheesy with it. For mm. example, if I'm looking at a CV, if I'm looking for a sales executive, I do want to see that they have uh, worked effectively with a target-driven environment, that they are a target-driven salesperson, um, mm. that they have worked toward targets and achieved targets and generated revenue. I want to see that because that shows to me that they have the skill set that I require um, for the sales role I'm recruiting for. So it's very mm. good to keep in mind what the, job, what the job wording is on the spec and marry that then with your own wording on your CV. So there's a parallel between the job description and your skill set and experience. So some buzz words are needed, uh, some descriptive buzzwords, but don't overdo it. OK, brilliant. OK, perfect. So um, one thing that I'm always saying to my candidates when I'm talking to them is in relation to setting out the CV that they start with the most recent experience and then work their way back in a chronological order. That's how we like to see it. But um, I mean, for people who are who don't understand the reasoning behind this, Noel, can you explain why we do this or why we ask for this? Well, the reason that we ask for it in general is because your CV exists for one reason only, and that is as a sales tool to get you an interview. Mm. And that's it. That's the only reason we do CVs. So what's most relevant to a company who is looking to assess you or to, to, to consider your position is what is fresh in your mind? What have you just been doing? Again, on the IT contracting side, a lot of contractors have been working for 5, 10, 15 years. And in that time, have used an awful lot of technologies and doing a lot of different types of, of projects. Mm. So the client is not only wanting to see, are you a Java developer, but when did you last use Java? What level of Java did you use? What mm. certification? If you last use it five years ago, well, maybe it's not the right version that they're using now. There's a lot of additional information that can be taken from having your experience there. And if you've been working for more than two or three years, what you did three years ago is not as relevant to getting you a job today as what you did last week. So it's that it's there in front of them. Here's your name. Yeah. Here's your skill set. Here's what you can do for them and have been doing for somebody else. And it's right there. Nobody has to go to another page. So yeah, I would always yeah, like yeah. to have it done that way to see how relevant it is and to see how close it is as quickly yeah. as possible. Yeah, yeah. You see, you have to remember that the recruiter only, they're only going to be glancing at your CV, as I said, for like seven to 10 seconds. And in those seven to 10 seconds, they have to be able to see that you have the experience and the skill set that they're looking for. Otherwise, they just move on. If mm. they have to go scrolling down through pages of information of you having worked in, in McDonald's or the local fish and chip shop back in the 1985, it's not relevant. And it, it means that you don't get past that the next day. So absolutely, always put your most recent jobs first. OK, um, OK, perfect. Now, this next question is probably relevant for both of you, but I, I think um, certainly on the commercial side, I, I would use this advice a lot when talking to candidates. So I'll go to you, Daniela, first. But in relation to showing achievements yeah. on your CV, would you normally advise your candidates to do this? Um, well, I would, absolutely. However, if your CV starts to get too long and difficult to read, maybe consider putting the achievements into your cover letter. Um, but if not, try to put your achievements under each role, especially, again, if you are applying for a sales role and mm. having worked in a target-driven environment, having achieved a significant increase in revenue, having um, won tenders, won sales achievements, then really that needs to be documented on your CV. I need to be able to see that you are a sales professional and that you have won um, in that area and have achieved significant growth in that area. So, yes, I would put achievements under each sales role that you've held. OK, how about you, Noel? 
I wouldn't necessarily see achievements in the same way, because again, yes. if you look at the reason of which IT contractors are taken into a company, it's usually uh, for a very specific reason. It can be that they have a niche skill that the company yes. can't find on the permanent market, mm. uh, or it can be that they want them to do work that the permanent workers don't want to do because it's not as interesting. It's not as leading edge. It's not as as exciting to get your teeth into. So the achievement then is I went in and I did my contract, so it wouldn't be as selling. But in preparing for the webinar and thinking about what we like to see, I, I looked at one candidate CV and I thought it was very useful. They had their, their details on the top and they had their technical summary. But under each contract they had done and the little blurb of this was a project to deliver this, to do this, at the bottom they just had technologies. And they would have just literally the words listed. So I knew for this contract they have done, the, they've used these technologies. Right. Which I thought was great because you're not trying to add up the technical summary and go, well, were you using that for this purpose? or Right. Which, so, you know, that being said, as an IT contractor, if you've delivered the project ahead of time, if you went in as a three month contract and it's been renewed 14 times, mm. highlight that, make it very clear yeah. that, you know, I went in to do one thing, but I was so good. They just kept me yeah. there. I'm a yeah. gentleman I'm working okay. with at the moment, went in on a six month contract and was there for seven and a half yeah. years. Yeah. You yeah, see, that so adds value. Great selling. Yeah, it's yeah. a great selling tool. Yeah. It shows that they were there. They do. They deliver value for the money they're charging. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. anything so that adds I, value yeah. to to your CV uh, and makes you shine, uh, stand out from the crowd, include that, document that on the CV. OK. OK, wonderful. So we're getting down towards the end of our CVs now. And some people like to hub, um, put down their hobbies and their extracurricular activities or their interests. Again, what's your opinion in relation to adding this? Now, personally, I would I would always say yes, because it adds that bit of personality that Daniela was talking about earlier on. But that might not be so relevant for every type of CV. So, Noel, what's your opinion? I well, I like to see a list of things because, you know, while we are looking predominantly for skill sets, we are still hiring people and it's nice yeah. to know what somebody's into beyond that. And it gives us as, as recruiters something to have a chat with the person about to get a different mm. sense of mm. them. I, mm. I would make a very key line that whatever you put down there, it really must be an actual interest or hobby. Yes. Of your own. Yes. Um, I'm reminded of somebody and I'm going back a very long time. So hopefully we're not going to be breaching anything. But they had put down sailing and tennis. And the hiring manager who was interviewing them was interested in both things themselves. So that's great. What do you sail? I'll probably get the details wrong, but they said, I believe there's laser ones and laser threes in dinghies. I could be wrong. The candidate said they sailed laser twos. There, there aren't any laser twos. And when they asked about tennis at the time, the candidate mentioned that they were a member of the Fitzwilliam Lawn Tennis Club, which was famous as not allowing female members at that time. <laughs> The interview had gone pretty well up until the end, but at that stage, the client just went, well, how would I go forward? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, have something that you can actually talk about. Put in something that you're interested in. And that can be video games. Well, especially in IT, it can be video games. Yeah. It can be yeah. walking the dog. It gives somebody a chance to have a conversation with you rather than can you use the skill? Where have you used the skill? You know, it makes it a little yeah. bit a little bit more interesting about it and it makes you stand out a bit yeah you know okay. so there's a okay. gentleman okay. i know yeah. who has an email address which comes from a book that i read years ago but it was such a standout name i'm like is that is that that book and oh my god it is so i actually can you know always remember him from that alone you know yeah. uh, okay so i think it's a good idea but make sure you can talk about them yeah okay uh, fantastic so um have you got the same opinion then, Daniela? I have, actually. I think uh, it's a very important section of, of anybody's CV. And it's also a section that's often left out uh, because deemed not so important. But what that what your hobbies and interests actually do, it just allows the reader um, to see you as a person um, with extra cricket activities outside work. Uh, and it emphasizes you as a professional all-rounder who understands the importance of a work-life balance. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, of course, uh, as Noelle has mentioned, it creates conversation, a common denominator in an interview situation where you have something common to talk about, um, mm. you know, over and above the, the general uh, interview question. So, yes, it's essential on CVs. 
OK, OK, fantastic. So um, at this point, we, we, um, we what we want to do is open up for any questions from people who have, have joined us um, at the webinar today. So if you do have any um, questions, please put them into the meeting chat and we'll put them to Daniela and Noel. Um, and while we're waiting to see if anyone has any questions, um, um, actually a question has just come in they're asking should we list our references on our cvs so um daniela can yeah. you answer this one absolutely excellent question um it's not essential you don't have to put your contact in uh, referees onto a cv um what you are doing um, is that you're opening up uh, and allowing the reader to call that number without first giving your referee a, a bit of a heads up. So I would recommend reference on request. It's very acceptable. Are you the same then? I, I would actually be even no more, more so, if you like, because uh, as IT contractors will know, frequently more so than permanent employees who may not move jobs every two, three, four, five years or even longer, IT contractors can, if, if, if depending on the skills and the demand, etc., they can be moving maybe twice a year. So they mm. really don't want their references to be contacted without mm. them knowing about it. And they want to make sure that the, the referee is OK to take another reference call. And I've heard horrific stories um, from candidates of, you know, people basically ringing the company they were currently contracting with to go, hi, who would be the referee for this candidate? Yeah. So I wouldn't take the risk of, of putting themselves potentially in a difficult position by yeah. having a current employer or somebody contacted without them knowing that the contract was coming up or that they were looking for a yeah. move in there. Yeah. Uh, it is, okay. as Daniela said, nobody is ever going to come around and say, no, you know, they didn't put the reference on their CV. Mm. I don't want to proceed as long as there is that's a reference fine. available yeah. at the end. That's absolutely fine. Yeah. OK, so um, we've we've more questions that are coming in. So um, I'll, I'll go to um, we, we, we did already speak about um, there's a question there. Should key achievements be put in below the profile in, in a CV? Now, um, you have more or less um, already answered that, um, Noel, when you were talking about uh, wanting to see the various different technologies that you would that a person has worked with and you also Daniela had said that you know key achievements can be put into the profile so we do have another question in relation to how do what we're talking about here how does that apply to online CVs or online applications uh, uh, to me an online CV is the same as doing a PDF and um, and the applications you'd want to highlight the best parts of your CV as well but um, Noel can you elaborate on that well I mean I'm kind of old school recruitment the guys used to laugh at me when I explained when I started in recruitment we had a4 <laughs> lever arch files in which we had paper copies of every CV in there but since I came back to recruitment all the CVs are online CVs from my perspective because everything comes in by email in, in this regard. But I'm reminded of something that, that was brought out in one of our company meetings, actually, and I can't remember the details exactly, and I'm sure the figures have changed now. But it mm. was something in the area of 18,000 CVs a month come in into our, 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 our website and our applications through various forms. So that's all of us trying to read those. Hence mm. why, in case anyone's wondering why we would only take seven to ten seconds to look at a CV and why we wouldn't read it and are we all just being very lazy, the sheer scale of things are out there. What you want yeah. to do is make your CV to make it that every reason people might have to reject you is taken out. So, yeah. for example, if you are a stamp for uh, if you have a stamp for work visa, you're not an Irish national, but you have a stamp for work visa, put that under your name. Have that as clear mm. as possible, because people with the best will in the world, if they need somebody and they have a client who won't sponsor or, as I say, for IT contracting, I need people who are legally able to work in the country as it stands. I can't apply for a visa for them. Okay. So if you have yeah. that visa, tell me about it. Don't hide it at the bottom of your last page. Put it in the first thing up front there and make it as key there. And again, on an online CV, because you're reading it on a screen, people are looking at what's directly there. Put the information you need them to know directly in front of them. Yeah, perfect. So, Daniela, I have another question in here now, and it's asking in relation to the length of a CV. Yeah. So they're saying it is two pages what's sought after in a CV. And she's uh, this person is saying that they're hearing stories about CVs being overlooked if they're three or four pages, which 
I don't think so, but uh, your opinion. This this goes back to the amount of time we actually do looking at look at CVs and how important it is to get the relevant information onto the first page. Uh, and if you look at, at the layout out of a CV as well, personally, um, I would have your personal details, your profile. I then would go straight to my experience and get that the relevant experience onto the first page um, over and above your education. That's a personal thing that I like to see. I like to see the person person's um, experience coming above their education. There's no law against putting your education first, but I think it's imperative that your your that your um, that your experience is on the first page. Uh, and really, it, you shouldn't go over two pages uh, for a CV. OK, in an ideal situation. In but an that's, ideal not going to situation. Happen. that's not going to happen in contracting where they could no. have 10 or 15 <laughs> contracts. Yeah, yeah. OK, OK. Exactly. I, I've so, had people um, with up to 20 pages. Once. We have a question here in relation to um, my um, own P, my pet peeve. How important is grammar and spelling on a CV? So um, we go to Daniela again on that. Well, um, as we all know, and as I will reiterate again, we only give CVs such a limited amount of time. Um, and we're not only looking for the content, but we're also looking for grammar and spelling mistakes. The smallest spelling mistake will mean that your CV ends up in the no pile. And that's really just the nuts and bolts of it. It's imperative that you have spelling mistakes eliminated, grammar mistakes eliminated. So double check your own work again. And what you don't see, somebody else will see. So just have somebody else proofread your work for you. OK, Noelle, is that the same when it comes to IT CVs? Well, if you've got the really hard to find skill set, you're not going to be put in the no pile because you've got a typo. But it does affect the impression that you leave. Yeah. Um, and I think I've mentioned previously, I, I had one candidate at one stage and I, I've never forgotten him. I can still tell you where he lived. I can't <laughs> tell you anything else about him. But the reason I know where he lived was because he misspelled every line of his own address, every single line. And that has stood out for more years than I want to remember. OK, so it's not why you want people remembering your CV. OK, OK, and yeah, Ella fantastic. Said, get somebody else to look at it because you'll just see what you think you, you, you meant to put there. But yeah, absolutely. wonderful. So um, we're just coming up to the end of our time here now. We've we've one last question here about asking uh, what do you think about putting your date of birth on the CV? Is that relevant at all, Noel? That's an interesting one, and it can be quite a tricky one because of ageism. And again, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, from my point of view, completely, it comes down to how desperately does a client need your skill set, mm -hmm. and and how what is the skill set? I mean, if it's the latest bleeding edge technology that's been released in, sort of in the last year, then to be honest, your date of birth might be a disincentive. Mm -hmm. However, if it's something that's more what I call old school C or C++ mm -hmm. uh, or embedded firmware, really low level stuff, then actually having an older date of birth isn't a, isn't a problem at all. And to be honest, we can usually get into roughly the right area with when you did your degree and your leaving cert anyway. Yeah. So it's, it's a matter of personal preference in there. But if you are feeling that ageism has been a, is potentially an issue for you, I'd take it off. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it, I personally are feel the same then. Well, I personally feel it's not necessary um, to have your, your date of birth on your CV at all. Uh, and if you are applying for roles and your date of birth is on your CV, just take, this, take the date of birth off um, and see if you can get any further with the interview process with the date of birth off the CV. Um, it, it's worth trying. OK, just, fantastic. Thinking to what you were saying there, Daniela, is there any benefit to having a date of birth? Am I no, sure? because as you said, it's very easily worked out. The, the age of work candidates is very easily worked out from their education year. So, no, there's yeah. no benefit to anybody to have a date of birth on the CV. So then, Absolutely it, not. It, when in doubt, leave it out. Yeah, agree. Okay. OK, ladies, I really appreciate your time today. Um, for everyone watching, as I said earlier on, please do follow us LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, next week, the webinar will be on online interviewing and we'll have Ashling, Emma and Miriam um, doing that webinar. So uh, that, that that should be very interesting. Really appreciate everyone joining us today. Thanks very much indeed. I think everyone got something out of that. There's certainly a lot of really good information that came through there on CV preparation. It is your sales pitch. So best of luck to everyone. And um, please do, if you have any questions, contact myself, contact Daniela or contact Noel. 
we're all there on LinkedIn. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you. The very best of luck. Thanks very much, everyone. Stay safe.